German chocolate cake in May as well. Mm. Her speech today is called, Not So Much at One Time. Please help me welcome Carol Nielsen. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. My speech has three parts to it. And in the first part, I'm going to be talking to you about coaching. In the second part, I'm going to give you a coaching example. And then in the third part, we're going to have an informal discussion about that. So, let's begin. You have an employee that's just not doing what they should be doing. They're late with reports, they're not doing their work correctly. Or maybe one of your children isn't doing the chores that they need to be doing around the house. But for some reason, there's work that needs to get done, and it's not being done. And now it falls on your lap to do some coaching and bring things up to speed that you need. Now, when people function efficiently and effectively, everyone benefits. Your job, whether it's an employer or a parent or some other position, is easier because responsibilities are shared, tasks are completed properly and on time, productivity increases, and people feel good about themselves because they're doing things to the best of their abilities. Everyone feels part of the team or feels part of the household if it's a family. They know what they're supposed to do and they know how their work affects the other parts of the group. Coaching plays an important part in helping people function efficiently and effectively. Through coaching, people learn what is expected of them, their current performance level, and where they must improve and important information they need to do their best. So where do you start? Before you start having this discussion with this person, you need to do some thinking, maybe you do need to do some research. But people usually don't perform well for one of these reasons. Poor training. No one ever showed them how to do the work properly. Inadequate equipment. They don't have the right equipment to do the job. Time. They don't have the time to do the work properly or motivation. They're overworked, they're underpaid, underappreciated, they're just not happy with anything, their co-workers, their job. You really can't motivate these people. So they're out of a motivational category. So you have to determine which of these reasons applies to the situation and ask yourself questions that may help you determine those reasons and whether coaching is needed to solve the problem or if coaching as in the person that's not motivated at all won't do any good. So some questions you can ask yourself. Does the person know what is supposed to be done and when? If there's a deadline and something's due on Thursday, are they aware of that? What's the specific difference between the present performance level, what they're currently doing, and what it is you want them to be doing, and what do they need to know to get to that better level. And maybe the person doesn't even know that their performance is unsatisfactory. If you haven't had any kind of a discussion with them or told them, for instance, when the husband washes the dishes and you just rewash them because that's easier. <laughs> that's a good example of that. Does the person have the skills required to do the job? And if not, will they need some kind of training to get to that level? And is the performance standard realistic? Maybe what you expect as far as clean dishes is too high, and maybe you should lower your expectations on that. What impact does the performance problem have? The person should know how if they do something wrong, how that chain of events can affect all the others in the workplace or other things, maybe in the household. Does the person have the adequate resources to do the job? I find at my job sometimes I don't have the adequate resources to do them and I have to figure out a different way to work around not having those adequate resources. Are obstacles beyond the person's control affecting their performance? If so, remove those obstacles so that they can improve. 
Does the positive performance yield positive rewards? If the person performs well and receives an undesirable reward for doing twice as much work in less time, well, their performance is going to decrease. Could the person do the job if he or she wanted to? If not, coaching will not help. So once you've analyzed that situation and decide the, the person could perform to your expectations if he or she really wanted to, that's where the coaching steps in. Now when you do your coaching session, it's much better if you can do it in private and focus on the issue at hand. Describe specifically the reason that you are meeting for this discussion. Express your concern about the area of performance you would like improved. Describe the impact that performance has on you and others. And be sure and acknowledge and listen to that person. And they may offer some actual solutions. Seek the person's ways on how to improve their performance. And discuss some solutions with that performance. Agree on a solution and the actions that you will take and then follow up to ensure there's accountability by checking progress with the person. And praise positive results. It's like Mark Twain says, he could live two months on a good compliment. <laughs> As a coach, remember to keep your feedback related to the behavior. Avoid judgments describing rather than evaluating the behavior. And use I statements rather than you. Someone doesn't want to hear, you never do this. It's, I need you to do this because. Speak calmly. That's easier said than done. There's, when you're doing a coaching session, that can get rather hard if the other person is getting angry and really frustrated. But do your best and avoid um, an emotional language, tone, and gestures. Okay, now for the second part of the project. As you know, I do funeral lunches at church. And for a while, they were telling me on Tuesday that there would be a funeral on Wednesday. Oh. For crying out loud, not so much at one time. I, can, I did it, I managed to prepare a meal for 50 to 150 people with that short of notice. But it drove me crazy. There was just too much planning to do all at once, and it frazzled my nerves, and I was crabby and angry, and I was complaining to Kata. And Kata loves it when you complain to her. And then she get excited, and I get excited, and I thought, you know, it does absolutely no good to complain to Kata. So I thought, I am going to go to the next church staff meeting, and I am going to talk to... Father Kevin, and I'm going to talk to everyone involved in the church because they all have some piece of it when it comes to a funeral. So I went to the staff meeting and I told them, I said, you know, when, when you are planning a dinner for someone at your house, and let's say your dinner's on Saturday, you probably start planning the menu on Monday. And then maybe on Tuesday and Wednesday you go out and buy groceries, and then Thursday, Friday you're preparing some of it, and Saturday you do the last minute preparations. And I said, and when you tell me on Tuesday that there's a funeral on Wednesday, I don't have any time to do any of that, and I'm prepping for 50 to 150 people. And their first response, Brad said, well, from now on, Carol, we will make sure that all funerals give us a six-month note. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that would be very nice, Brad. I said, what I would really like, if it's on Wednesday, if you could at least tell me on Monday, and if you could tell me a little bit earlier, that would be even better. And then I was on a roll. And so I said, and it really doesn't work well when there's a Thursday funeral, because on Wednesday, we have the Wolves Den event. And it's an event for people with Down syndrome, and they meet, and they have music, and they have food, and it's from 5 o'clock until I don't know when. But when I'm there in the kitchen on Wednesday, 
that upsets their getting things set up. They like to, they have a plan, they have a certain progress and a certain way they like to do it and timing and they don't care if it's three o'clock and they're all set up and things aren't until five. That's just how they do it. So I said, if I can do one on Thursday, a funeral on Thursday, if I talk to those people and let them know and I know far enough ahead of time that I can get in there early and get out for them, but it doesn't work the best. So. After that discussion, they stopped pulling that on me. They would give me notice, and they'd say, okay, Carol, we've got one coming up on Wednesday, and it might be Sunday when they were telling me this, and we'll have the menu to you on Monday. And so my stress was a lot more relieved. I don't know about theirs. I would have thought it would have been, because they were <laughs> doing so much planning all at once, but... I felt they needed to know where I was coming from and why this was causing me a lot of problems. And if I didn't coach them and tell them, they wouldn't know. And they would just figure if they can tell her on Tuesday and she can pull it off and it's ready on Wednesday, well, it must work for her. Mm -hmm. So that was my coaching session that I had with the church to let them know how to make things work smoother and easier so I could perform better. So now, I want some discussion from you about my coaching session, maybe what you think I did right, what I else I could have done. Was I just so smart? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <I am. laughs> Why, perhaps you could have asked them for some help. Instead of doing it all yourself, you could have the tasks divided. Somebody does it do, does the, you know, sets up the room, somebody else sets up the dessert, you have them with meal should ask for help. Okay. We do have the test kind of divided like that. So, Dan. Carol, I, I like your speech. I think you did a good job. You opened up a lot of thought for me. As an employer, I always have felt that the toughest part of the job is termination of an employee. I think maybe that could have been covered a little bit more. You gave all the ideas on how to get somebody to do something, but let's face the facts. That may not always work. And you may have to tell somebody, well, we don't need your services anymore. Big, big responsibility, particularly if the person's got a family, and you're going to let them go. How do you handle that? Other than that, I thought you did a great job of presenting on how to deal with an employee and how that helped the overall job picture. Good job. Okay, so hopefully you can use some of the things I presented when you have to talk to an employee, you talk to a member of your family, and hopefully they won't be saying, not so much at one time. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing.